Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show. Today is Friday, October the 3rd, 5.40 p.m. Yes, I know I'm running a little bit late today, and I'll explain why shortly. We're also going to talk about eBay and PayPal splitting up, and your other concerns regarding eBay and PayPal from the last video. So let's get started right now. The first thing, guys, is why am I late? Well guys, for the next month or two, my videos are going to be later than usual. This time, I'll probably be uploading them 8 or 9 p.m. on Friday nights. And the reason is because, as you know, I'm a picker, and I go to various junkyards all over the place and other cool places and buy out inventory. I've come across this really neat place in Pennsylvania. Oh, this place is to die for. And... It's basically time sensitive. I have to get this work done. It's going to take time. To give you a really quick idea, let me just do a real quick cutaway and show you a few snapshots from earlier. So guys, if you're fans of old cars like I am, and I sure hope you are because I think old cars are really cool, you would enjoy being a picker too. But let's now talk more about eBay and PayPal and your concerns and your comments from last week's video. As you know, the big news of this week is that eBay and PayPal are splitting up. That rumor was out for at least a week or two. And you may or may not know this, but this was proposed some time ago by Carl Icahn, and John Donahoe was steadfastly against it. He did not want any part of eBay and PayPal splitting up. Well, guess what? They are splitting up like a marriage gone bad. And what most of you don't know, or quite a few of you don't know, is John Donahoe is stepping down as CEO in 2015. He's not being asked to step down, he's voluntarily stepping down, and he's not leaving eBay. He is staying on in another advisory capacity. I don't know what his exact job title will be yet. I don't know if it's been announced, but he's not going anywhere, but he is not going to be CEO. So, we've got that to think about. As far as eBay and PayPal splitting up, I myself am what they call cautiously optimistic. Let's play a wait and see and, things, and see how things go. Let's talk a little bit about your concerns from last week's video. I was a little surprised at one thing. The video was basically dealing with something called cross-site scripting, where scammers actually insert malware and they take you to a site off eBay to defraud you. But very few people even commented on that. So, since you guys didn't comment or seem concerned with it, we're not going to talk about it. We're going to move right on to other topics of the video. Okay? Now, I remember a couple of things you guys seem to be big about. I had stated that I thought eBay should advertise its really good buyer protection. Several of you guys said, well, Joe, I don't think they should do that because it would actually invite scammers to eBay. And I do see your point there. And that brings us back to something that I've been talking about for a long time. And that's why doesn't eBay validate all new accounts? All new accounts should be validated with an address, a phone number, and an email. I mean, when you're signing up for something anywhere else, you do have to be validated. And I'm going to couple this little incident with a story that happened to a friend of mine on Facebook. I will not name who he is, but here's what happened. It has to do with an iPhone. Last week I told you guys, eBay is really touting selling iPhones on its platform. I'm not sure why they're so hot for iPhones, but iPhones are a category that can be tricky. 
This is a category that will bring out the scammers. So what happened to my friend is he listed an iPhone in an auction. Okay? When you list it in an auction, all bets are off, anything can happen. So somebody signed up with a brand new eBay account just to bid on and win his phone, and they did. And of course they didn't pay him. A few days go by, he sends an unpaid item notice out, and he suspected right away, he could see it was a new account, and he suspected that the person was doing this just to disrupt selling activity. And of course the person never paid, so he got his final value fee credit back, and he relisted the phone, but this time he listed it, fixed price, with immediate payment required, and it sold, I'm not kidding you, within 20 minutes. I do believe it was 20 minutes, but very quickly. And that's very important, guys, because people are still scamming, creating fake accounts. You need to protect yourself, in my opinion, by listing fixed price with immediate payment required. You'll never get burned that way, okay? What I'm doing right now, a little cheating, I'm reading your comments from last week's video so I have some more things to talk about. Since I got back late, as I just said, I didn't have time to even make notes. So I'm going to do this on the run. Now, it seems to me that you guys in the past have agreed on many of the things we've talked about in here. But as far as restocking, I want to talk about this. Do you guys charge a restocking fee? And if you do, do you actually enforce it? I've talked about this for a few weeks in the past, and it happened again this week. I had two people this week contact me and say, Joe, I got the item. It's wonderful, but it's not what I want. I want to return because they made a mistake. They didn't do their measuring, or they didn't check their, their size or whatever. I said to them, no problem. Send it back to me, and I will give you a refund through PayPal minus the restocking fee. And neither one of them balked a bit. They said, I totally understand. And they actually manned up and said it was their fault for not reading the listing. The interesting thing, and this is really weird, is that both items were cheap items under forty dollars and I sent both items out in bubble mailers as you know if it's three ounces or less first class shipping if you print eBay labels through eBay is a dollar ninety three so to each person I paid a dollar ninety three shipping so if you figure I'm charging them ten percent 10% of $40 would be $4, so I'm not going to lose on the deal, okay? I rarely, and I mean this, I rarely get returns on expensive items. Anything over $50 rarely comes back. And anything over $100 never comes back. Never. I think in my 20 years, 20 years, I think in my whatever it is, 14 years on eBay, I think I've had one expensive item of like $175 come back because the lady did not read her wheel size. It was her mistake. And really, she didn't want to return it. She wanted to exchange it. But the thing is, I didn't have what she wanted in her size, so it, you know I had to give her a return. But I noticed people who were spending more coin on eBay are more careful and more diligent, and they read the item clearly. People who spend under 40 or under 30. Forget about it, man. Those are the guys that are so quick to ask for a refund. A lot of you guys are still complaining about the PayPal six month buyer protection policy, and I'm with you all the way on this. I am with you all the way. Six months is freaking ridiculous. I don't know what they're thinking. Many of you guys wrote in saying that you sell brand new items, like clothes, let's say, a sweater, and that the person could get the item, wear the sweater for three or four months, and then file a case. And you know something? You're damn right. 
they could do that to you. I hope it doesn't happen, but it could happen, and they're really opening the door for a lot of unnecessary problems. Now, how many of you guys listen to eBay Radio Tuesday or the eBay webinar on Wednesday? I want to talk about both these right now because they come into play with returns. The radio show, as you probably know, is on Tuesday, 2 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern Time, or 11 o'clock in the morning out in California. And it's hosted by Griff and Lee Mirabel. And they've been doing eBay radio for years. And it's three hours long. And I like it because they talk about timely topics on eBay. And they always have an open phone segment where sellers can call in and voice their opinion on whatever. I didn't call in this week, but I listened to it. And the subject of returns came up. And it also came up the next day, Wednesday, the webinar. The webinar was once again with Griff, but it featured two top-rated sellers, Jason Smith and Brian Goodman from Thrifting with the Boys. I actually had the pleasure of meeting those guys at eBay on location in Philly. And the subject of returns came up. A caller called in, a caller, you know, an eBay seller called in and said she was unhappy with the amount of returns she was getting. And they asked her what percentage of her sales were returns. It wasn't a big amount, but she was upset by it. And the panelists said, well, listen, returns are a way of life. You have to deal with it. And you know, when you're selling on eBay, I have to say returns are a way of life. You have to deal with it. What upsets me is when people just don't read or make no effort. I understand mistakes do happen, okay? But like I talked to you a couple of weeks ago about a, a chrome emblem versus a silver one. When you actually have it in black and white, it kind of stymies you. You kind of say, why don't these people read the auction? And then we can go back once again to the iPhone app because a lot of you guys have been writing in saying you would never, ever use the iPhone app to buy something. And guys, I'm with you on that. I certainly wouldn't unless it was a dire emergency. Like if I was going somewhere and it was an auction ending at 12 o'clock and I had to snipe that auction, well then, okay. I would maybe use it in that manner, but I would have read it fully first on the Mac. Knowing what I'm getting, seeing the pictures, being clear about everything. Guys, how many times have you had to return an item in your eBay career? Tell me about that. And I'll tell you mine. I have never returned an item where I made a mistake. See, for me, it's not a big deal because let's just say I bought a set of hubcaps from a 1975 Chevy. And then when I got them, I realized I misread and they're from a 74 Chevy. Well, it's no big deal. I'll still sell them, even though it's not what I wanted. But I'll tell you this, in my eBay career, I can think of at least two or three times where a person had factory hubcaps listed pictures beautiful everything i paid i got the items and they were that generic china taiwan crap that i hate so much boy do i hate that that really really pisses me off and one guy that did it to me was an actual hubcap seller one of my own kind defrauded me now in all fairness this was a long time ago on ebay back in the year uh, maybe 2000 because back then eBay was the Wild West all kinds of things were happening in fact one of the guys left me negative feedback as a buyer can you believe that he had sent me four he listed four factory hubs and he sent me four generic copy crap and he wouldn't he wouldn't you know, he wouldn't take them back I said, screw him. I negged him. And he negged me back. 
Now, of course, today that couldn't happen. But I just thought it's interesting that I always read the listing. I can remember one time, and this was again about seven or eight years ago, a guy had a picture of four hubcaps. I remember what they were for. They were for a GMC. Seven dollars. I'm like, wow, seven dollars. Can't beat that. I bid. I won them. And even though it said hubcaps plural and it had all four laid out, he did at the very bottom in small letters say, you're only getting one for this money, which was deceptive. But truthfully, it wasn't all his fault. It was not all his fault. I should have read that stupid little line. So I paid him. I paid him. And this is really ironic. You're going to laugh. The guy says to me, the seller, Joe, you won one hubcap for $7 plus shipping. If you want to buy the other three, you can have them for $7 each, and I won't charge you any more shipping. And you know something? I took him up on his offer because I knew I could move him. I didn't make super coin on them, but I made something, you know? But my point is, to some extent, I didn't read, and I was wrong, and I manned up, and I wouldn't return it. I don't do returns like that. I've only returned those two or three times when a person did a bait and switch. They had a picture of factory items, they sent me garbage. But thankfully, I think most of those sellers that were doing the bait and switch have been knocked off eBay for the defect system. And something else just came to me I want to talk to you about. Very important. I've been meaning to tell you this for weeks, guys. Do me a favor. A super favor. A lot of you guys contact me to ask me eBay questions, to talk to me, to tell me your own stories, and that's fine. I love it. Keep, keep contacting me. But please, please, not through eBay anymore. You guys are jamming up my eBay mailbox like you wouldn't believe. When you send somebody a contact through eBay, you're only allowed a certain amount of characters. For instance, let's say one paragraph. Well, some of you guys are sending me four and five paragraphs at one time, which means you are sending me four and five messages through eBay in succession. Bang, 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 bang. I got a great idea for you guys. It's gonna, it'll be easier for you and easier for me. Email me directly. If you don't want to contact me through YouTube, you're more than welcome to, if you know how. If you'd rather contact me, my email is super easy to remember. It's the same as my channel name. Crazy New York Driver. C-R-A-Z-E-E-N-Y-D-R-I-V-E-R at AOL.com. It would be much easier for me if you contact me through email or through YouTube. All right? I'm sure you know how to contact me through YouTube because I made a tutorial on it about four or five months ago. If you want me to tell you again, just ask. All right. That's all I'm going to do for tonight since I'm running late. I don't want to keep you guys late. Comments on anything you want, eBay related, especially eBay and PayPal splitting up. Mr. John Donahoe stepping down. Or anything else you want to talk about, anything. Whether it's returns, policies, webinars, eBay radio. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Crazy New York Driver, and you're not. I will see you next Friday evening at about this time. Rock on, guys!